Hi everyone, this is Professor Hai Nguyen, and I would like to welcome you to my History 17B uh, online course. Um, in this video, I just want to let you know what the class, uh, in terms of American history, what we're going to be focusing on. So um, we will begin in this class looking at American history from the year 1877, and uh, we are going to try to make our way to the present day, if you will. But um, a full disclaimer, if you will, uh, 1877, we're going to be uh, looking at American history a little bit before that with the Reconstruction period in the 1860s, just ultimately to provide you with some context as to why 1877 is such an important year in American history, if you will, um, simply because um, 1877 Reconstruction uh, comes to an end um, and some of the promises that were made during uh, uh, promises that were made after uh, the Civil War, if you will, were left unfinished. And it is going to take another 100 years for America to ultimately um, to try to fulfill those promises to uh, African Americans. And some would say it's still um, somewhat unfinished, if you will. But we start in 1877, looking at the reconstruction, uh, the end of the reconstruction period. And then we will ultimately shift gears, looking at uh, Western expansion and looking at its impact on Native Americans. And then we will progress to the industrialization period, looking at somewhat America's really building um, the foundation and, and the infrastructure that it is going to need in order for it to become somewhat a, a global industrial powerhouse. Uh, yes, guys, there was once a part of time where America was actually uh, uh, the, the, the home, right? Or the country that other countries would send their manufacturing to, if you will. So yes, the industrialization period, this is where you really have America uh, uh, gearing up, right? Uh, to produce materials. And then by the 1890s, it's really America's coming out party, if you will, in terms of its influence and ex expansion overseas. Uh, we start off in, in Spanish, uh, the Spanish-American War, uh, America's uh, reaching out to Latin America, but it is going to expand into the Pacific Ocean, uh, uh, well across into Asia, and, uh, and become somewhat an a imperial colonial power by the dawn of the 20th century, if you will. But if you look at the 20th century, um, we call it America century, guys, because again, it's really America's coming out party. And this is America's rise on a global stage, right? Because if you look at it, World War I, World War II, America really tried to convey itself and really try to project itself as a force of democracy, right? And that ultimately by 1945, because of the two world wars, if you will, um, the rest of our European competitors uh, have somewhat, um, are, are somewhat destroyed or, or at least their societies are, are in ruins or still trying to recover from the, the damages of the world wars, if you will. But because America is across the ocean, if you will, it's really untouched. And by 1945, it is the only one out of the two superpowers left that is still standing. But it is it will have to compete for powers against its communist allies, the Soviets. Uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, yeah, the, the communist uh, uh, allies during World War Two. But who is going to become its foe, its enemy, public enemy number one after 1945. Yes, it is the Cold War, guys. The Cold War from 1947 to 1991, America commits itself to an all-out war to uh, defeat communism. And this is where not only do you have a war uh, uh, against the Soviets, but you also have proxy wars in Asia and in, in Central America and in, in the Middle East. And again, guys, um, we're talking about the Korean War, we're talking about the Vietnam War. And um, if you haven't noticed, uh, I am Vietnamese, um, and my family wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Vietnam War. So this time period is also personal to me as well. But getting back to somewhat the Cold War, if you will. Yes, 1991, America defeats communism. And ultimately, now it is the only superpower left, uh, if you will. And even up until today, or dominance across the globe is by far um, 
second to none, right? That, that we have, we are the richest nation on earth. We have the most powerful military on earth. And we are the ones that are really running the show in terms of global politics, if you will, right? So yes, this is why we call it America Century. It's really America's coming out party, if you will, and rise on a global stage. But this time period is also relevant in another sense is that um, from my personal experience of teaching History 17B in person, if you will, especially to a diverse demographic of students, uh, students of color, if you will, this time period, I would say, is probably the most relatable. That's that I have the easiest time of trying to make it relevant to my students. It's simply because this is where you also have America becoming a much more diverse, becoming a multiracial society, if you will, because you're going to have uh, uh, Asian immigration in the mid 19th century, but you're also going to have. Uh, um, uh, immigration from uh, the Latinx community, from Latin America, from Central America in, in the 20th century, right? Of course, the Native Americans have always been here, if you will, and African Americans as well. So this is really where people of color in particular, especially by the mid, mid 20th century, what are we talking about? Uh, the civil rights movement, right? Um, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, if you will, African Americans really set the foundation for the civil rights movement, but it's not just about African Americans, guys. The civil rights movement is going to inspire so many other movements, the Chicana movement, the Asian American movement, right? The Native American movement, and even with women, women liberation movement in the 1960s and 70s, if you will, really opening the floodgates, really opening the doors for people of color and for women to have equal access and opportunities. But I, I find those struggles and also their effort to fight for social justice and equality in America really inspiring, right? Um, and also um, that was my, my emphasis, that was my main interest in studying in American history. Um, so um, in this class, that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a heavy influence of, uh, um, you're gonna see a, a extra emphasis of looking at history from a bottom down perspective looking at it from the experiences of immigrants, people of color, women in American history, especially in the module assignments that you're gonna be working on, right? That is not to say that we are not going to cover uh, somewhat uh, white Americans, Europeans, immigrants who are coming over, uh, uh, workers in particular, labor unions. So we are going to cover all of that. That is in your textbook, if you will. But what I'm hoping is that throughout the module assignments that you're gonna be working, I look at it as a supplement to some of the gaps and some of the things that your textbook may not cover in depth in enough, if you will. And that's where my emphasis and my influence is going to come in because uh, when I study American history, um, yes, it was really the civil rights movement and it was the book, Autobiography of Malcolm X that really inspired me to go into history, if you will. So that's what this class is gonna be about. We're gonna to try to look at American history after the 1870s in all various perspectives. And I'm hoping to, care, uh, to, to teach you somewhat the standard narrative, but also we are going to try to somewhat expand somewhat um, the, the, the narrative of American history, looking at it from all lenses, if you will. And I, I got some things that, um, that um, I realized that uh, I didn't learn when 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 I was going through grad school and everything like that. So you're gonna see some things that that you never knew that you didn't know before, right? And I like to think that this is the reason why um, Evergreen Valley College, Ohlone College, and De Anza College, and San Jose State they hire me to teach uh, uh, history in, at uh, at their schools, if you will. I like to think that I, I have a unique perspective on American history, and I like to think that I, I bring somewhat a, a history, a, a examination of American history that, that you will appreciate and you will find interesting and that will engage you. And that by the end of the semester, you are going to walk away from the semester understanding that American history is just not some distant, it's not just some irrelevant thing that you just try to memorize and forget. What I'm hoping is that by the end of the course, what you understand is that maybe your history, your family history, your community history, right, is the story of American history. 
right? That was the thing that I learned throughout my years of looking at American history. And I was very fortunate enough to have some wonderful mentor that really inspired me, that really built somewhat the understanding within me that my family story, right? My community, the Vietnamese American community, right? Is the story of America. Just think about it, guys, right? America, I mean, unless you're Native Americans, your ancestors, right, came somewhere from overseas. And as they came to America, they experienced some challenges, right? They experienced somewhat uh, inequalities, if you will, right? Name me a group and I will let you know how they were somewhat uh, um, discriminated by the group before. That is not to say I'm trying to teach you that American history is all about oppression or anything like that. No, I really do appreciate America for all the opportunities that it has given me. I am an immigrant to this country. So if you look at it, right, the story of people from all around the world coming here, right, facing challenges, right, certain inequalities within the system itself, but at the same time, we are here, right? This is the progress. We are here, right? This is the country that we live in, and this is the country that I am proud to be a citizen of, right? So at the end of the day, that is the story of American history, guys. So I hope you stick around, right? I got a lot of things lined up for you throughout this course. And um, with that said, um, check out the class, guys. Go through the somewhat the module pages, if you will. And I will see you in the next video for the syllabus where I will explain to you, right, what the class in terms of classwork and your grades, how it will break down. So I will see you in the next orientation video. I hope you stick around on that, guys, right? Uh, I'm looking forward to you joining my class. Thanks, guys.